Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY, that's 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash football. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Bear Bets, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the best place to bet touchdowns. Download the TK Sportsbook app. Use the code BEARBETS. That's the code BEARBETS for new customers to get $200 in bonus bets. How's your week been? What's going on? I'm Bear uh, You're joined by good. my man, Jeff Schwartz. He's playing hurt today. I, I, I appreciate the, uh, the large doses of... With medicine that that are in uh, drugs that are in your body and and, and you being able to take some time and uh, actually be upright for a little bit here. Yeah, the the benefit of having uh, a wife in healthcare is we have uh, some good medicine just hanging around the house. Bear, I could suck it up for a couple hours to talk to you and the boys. And it's a big week for the Oregon Ducks. So uh, glad to be here. What a weekend in college football. We've been waiting for this weekend for a long time now. We 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 kind of looked at October 12th and thought, what could be, this is the sort of the conference realignment. This is what you get, right? Where these these big games on this weekend with the Big Ten. So uh, a lot of fun to talk to you and uh, and the guys about what we have happened this weekend. Yeah, I mean, I mean, last week we saw, what, four top 11 teams lose on the road. Yeah. Ranked opponents. Uh, we nearly had a fifth with Miami um, losing to, to coming back and beating Cal. And we got a bunch of options this week. We, we got what, six ranked teams on the road against yeah. the ranked teams, Penn State at USC, which is potential, I think, an upset potential there. That could be a close game. Clemson at Wake, I'd have a hard time seeing that happen. Iowa State, West Virginia potentially would be an opportunity. Uh, Boise State at Hawaii, I can't see that happening. Kansas State at Colorado, short number, certainly upset potential there. And Missouri at UMass, M- Missouri kind of showing us like – what we thought Missouri was all along. That's pretty much what they were overrated and uh, getting blown out by the Aggies last week. Yep. So it, it, does it, this feel very 2007 ish bear where in 2007 we had basically every team lose the top uh, of, of the, of the board there, you know, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six. I mean, it's sort of every weekend we switched who was who. And I think bear, we have a lot of teams that, you know, for whatever reason, you know, quarterback play seems to not be as good this season. A lot of variance there where you have weeks where guys play great and, and don't play well. And then we're seeing, too, a lot of these, it's hard to win road conference games, man. doesn't matter who the opponent is. doesn't matter the year, Bear. And I think that goes back to offensive line play this year in general. I think it's been meh. Um, quarterback play, for the most part, Bear, for these contenders is sort of just, like, okay. Not good. I mean, how many How many quarterbacks right now? Of contenders, do fan bases feel like man? This is a championship winning quarterback we got. Like like even know. The, like even the Georgia fan base that I don't think they they they're up and down. Yeah, on cars argued on Carson Beck. So I, I, I'm I'm with you. But we we talked about those uh, teams on the road. So the, the Super Six sponsored by DraftKings. Uh, the question, or one of the questions, I should say this week will be, which top five team will suffer its first defeat this week? Texas, Ohio State, Penn State, or none of the above. Uh, I'll have the column coming out later in the week, but that will be one of the questions. And I wish I would have editorial judgment on this column because I, I, well, none of the above should not be an option. We just should have put Texas, Ohio State, Oregon, or Penn State. That way, may, may make you basically pick the winner between Oregon and Ohio State. None of none of none of this Brewster's Millions, Richard Pryor, none none of the above stuff. All right. But anyway, you're picking Ohio State, I would imagine. Who, who, who would who would be your top five team that's going to suffer their first 
their first well, defeat I mean, this week. I have to pick Ohio State. I'm wearing an Oregon shirt right now. What what am I? I, I mean, I can't pick. I can't pick none of the above. Um, I don't think Penn State's going to lose. I don't think Texas is going to lose. The only other option is Ohio State, and we'll talk about this in gambling group chat. Bear, a very fun game. Um, it's uh, it, the the biggest game in I think Austin Stadium history. Two versus three. Um, everyone in the entire country, uh, eyes on Austin Stadium, uh, you know, 4.30 Pacific kickoff, 7.30 Eastern. Um, it's going to be uh, it's gonna be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun, man. We've been waiting. Ohio State was supposed to come out to Eugene in 2020. Never happened. We won there in 2021, and both teams are loaded with talent. Um, but it's funny because I mentioned quarterback. It does feel like both fan bases and, and teams, to be fair, if either quarterback has to win the game for them, they don't feel great about it, which is not a good spot to be in, Bear. Well, I don't know if the Ohio State fan base really expects Will Howard to win the game for them. Whereas I think if Oregon wins, it's going to have to be behind a really, really good performance from Dylan Gabriel. Uh, I think Ohio State can get a what 12 of 23, 175 yards from Will Howard, and they'll be okay just because of their defense and their running game. But but I don't kind of you you hit on it just with how Ohio State has more ways to win. I think that's kind of reflective on how I feel, how I how I see this game. Mm, you're pick, of course, you pick it. It's like you picked Washington last year all the time against Oregon. I mean, just it's unbelievable. The Oregon I didn't just pick Washington against you. Oregon last year. Yeah, you you wore a purple shirt even on that one show. It was well, so I wore a purple shirt just to piss you off. It but just I was so pick, disrespectful. I didn't pick Washington. The one, the one thing I feel about this game, and I think that um, you'll talk about this a little bit later, Bear, is you know I I don't expect a blowout. I know some of these games end up being blowouts that that these sort of top fifteen matchups, to be top five matchups. Um, I think it's a close. I, I think both teams are very good. Ohio State has sort of the Jeremiah Smith factor, which we don't have, which is like throw the ball to Jeremiah Smith and make a play. We don't we don't have that. It gives them offense that we can't generate. And to be fair, we don't have. Anyone that could stop that? I mean, Muhammad, I, I in principle can. I guess if he gets physical with with uh, with Smith, so there's that can certainly lead to more of a blowout. But these teams are pretty fair in the trenches. Got good running backs, quarterbacks do good things, and 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 both teams offensively have had sort of like a five week, six week, including a bye, right? Like a six week sort of ramp up period for this game. We're going to see things that we have not seen either team do because they haven't had to do any of those things. All I know is it'll be the NBC crew making that late night drive from, uh, from Eugene to Portland to stay at the Portland airport charity right there. It won't be me, unfortunately, or either that, or sometimes I would just decide to suck it up and take the three flights home. Um, for, from to avoid that drive to PDX because, as you know, that is a brutal Post-game, late night yeah. drive yeah. Uh, for, from from Eugene to to Portland. But yeah, you could you could do like the Eugene to Salt Lake to Detroit to Hartford would would be my oh my yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Just, I, I would have to do three either three flights home from from Eugene or I could go Portland Detroit Portland Atlanta Portland Mini. And then to Hartford from there. So mm. that flight that flight route is not in my uh, plan this week. I, I do I will have a stop. I will be in Salt Lake though this week. I will have the uh, the Atlanta Salt Lake in my arsenal. The other place I'm going to be stopping is the gambling group chat with Sammy, Will, and Jeff. So enjoy. Welcome back, gambling group chat time once again. Myself, Jeff, joined by Will and Sammy P. As we always are, and and there's really only one place I think to. To start this week with the chat, it's the big one at Austin, number two, Ohio State, number three, Oregon. Uh, right now, Buckeyes looking at three and a half point favorite, total around 53 and a half is, is where we're at. It's really interesting because Ohio State used to be a uh, kind of a cinch in these types of games, uh, but they've lost four of their last six against top four, top five opponents, rather, or top 10 opponents, rather. Uh, 14 and three in their previous 17. Uh, if they lose on Saturday, it'll be the first time since 08, 09. They dropped three straight games against top 10 teams. Uh, a lot of times these big top three matchups uh, don't live up to the hype, uh, Jeff. 11 of the last 17 regular season top three meetings yeah. uh, have been decided by double digits. So are we going to have a um, 
a double digit uh, result here, or was this one actually going to live up to the hype and be a close one? I figured I'd start with you because I I, I yeah. figured we'd let you, uh, we'd let you empty the chamber before uh, Sammy and Will chime in, and we can just react off of you. I mean, what I just heard from you is that Oregon's going to win by double digits, right? Ohio State doesn't That's play well pretty in these much matchups, what I said, and then yes. they win, and then these games never live up to the billing. Um, I, I was surprised to see the total uh, open up lower. Um, it, it's, I think it's been bit up a little bit now. Um, but look, here's here's my simple way to, to put this game. Ohio State has more ways to win, right? They, they have, they're a little bit deeper. They have wide receivers that throw the ball up to and make plays. Oregon doesn't have that capability on offense. We don't have anyone to stop Jeremiah Smith if he wants to catch the ball one-handed. Uh, I think they have more ways to win. It doesn't mean they're going to win. Oregon needs a game from Dylan Gabriel that is an A game. He's played B games for the most part this season. The, the red zone turnovers have been bad the last couple of weeks. So if we get that A game from Gabriel, Oregon can win this game. But I think, guys, if Oregon wins, it's an over game. If Ohio State wins, it can be an under game, right? It just sort of swallows up Oregon's offensive line, which has been better the last three weeks. Um, the one thing I will say is that Oregon's defensive line is really good. I feel like that's being a little bit excused because of what happened with, with Genty you know, four weeks ago now in Eugene. He had three explosive runs in that game that counted for like 70% of his runs. Otherwise, we did fine against them. So uh, I'm excited for this one. Uh, Oregon has to win a high-scoring game, and Gabriel has to play an in, in A effort, an A game to win this one. Yeah, I like the under. I just think it's, uh, I don't know if it's a square approach, but kind of handicapping 101 where you have two teams at their first big test. little feeling out process early. It's uh, not not that it's the Super Bowl, but we see this all the time in the Super Bowl where there's nerves. You don't want to, it's almost like a boxing match where you don't want to get knocked out early. There's a little bit of a feeling out process. And I think matchup wise, it favors an under for a lot of the things Jeff was talking about where Oregon, you know, they haven't gotten a lot of chunk plays. They haven't been good finishing drives on offense. Meanwhile, uh, if there is one weakness for them defensively, Oregon, it's running the ball. And Chip Kelly is uh, is going to run the ball. He's going to run it between the tackles. And I think he's just going to try to wear on this Oregon defensive line and get his four or five yards a clip. And maybe in the first quarter, those runs are two and three yards. And by the second half and, and by the time that defensive line wears down, those open up to be four, five, six-yard carry. So uh, running clock, you know, Oregon can't finish drives to me. You know, 24, 21, even 27, 24 gets you home for an under. I think it's a field goal game. I boy during the summer, if you gave me like a pick them, I would have picked Oregon. Now that it's three and a half, I should definitely be on Oregon. I just I don't know. I don't know, Sammy. I just I can't quite get there with this Oregon team, even though I think the plus side taking the points is the right way to go. I can't get there. I can't believe this total has shot all the way up to 54 in some places. I mean, that's a big number for two defenses that are pretty solid, uh, especially in the trenches. You know, you can make a case for obviously either side. We talked about this with Bama and Georgia, and that game could have gone either way. This game could go either way. I think the matchup or the player that I'm most excited to watch in this game is Caleb Downs, uh, the free safety for Oregon or for Ohio State, excuse me. I'm all over the place because all these guys keep transferring to different schools. But could they not have used Caleb Downs at Alabama against Vandy? That was the missing piece. You needed a safety to get in and make plays inside the box and – The lack of safety play at Alabama costs them against Vanderbilt. Well, that won't be an issue for Ohio State. So I look at the secondary, especially, you know, Ransom and Downs being able to come in, stop the run. You get a couple punts in this game, guys, especially a field flipper punt where you get one of these teams pinned inside the 10 or inside the five. It's going to slow the entire game down. And I believe both defenses are ahead of both offenses. Not really impressed with Will Howard. Not really that impressed with Dylan Gabriel yet. And look, as good as, you know, Ohio State has looked, Ohio State has played nobody. Jeff, can Oregon be physical? That's all I need to know. If they can be physical, this is an under game. If Oregon's soft, it's an over game. To me, it's that simple. So two two things. One is that I I was watching uh, Ohio State's defense uh, today before we against Michigan State and against Iowa. I'm glad you mentioned their safeties, Sammy, because the, the big difference between the NFL game and the college game on defense is safety play, right? In the NFL, safeties fill the box fast and they make those tackles. Ohio State safeties are incredible. They are in that box making those tackles like, like NFL guys. I mean, down started as a true freshman for Nick Saban. Like, le- like legitimate, these are NFL top first round safeties they have. Oregon is going to have the problem with that. According So the, the, the physical question you asked. My problem with Oregon over the years and my my trepidation with picking them in some of these games 
has been, I don't think our defensive line has been good enough to play against big dog offensive lines over the years. And we've seen that, right? We've, we've seen us lose games to Ohio State in the in, 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 in the title game, LSU, and like all these sort of times when we've been sort of run over, right? This is the first game, Sammy, I felt maybe in a long time, maybe forever, that we actually can compete up front on our defense. Our defense line is really good. Uh, it, it's a high havoc rate. Harmon leads the country in pressures. Caldwell's good. Like, we have a legitimate defensive line, and it's about eight deep. We rotate guys in. It's really good. Throughout the Boise State game, it was a weird, awkward game. Um, so, yes, I think we can compete physically up front. Offensive line, there's some question marks. I, we'll, we'll see how it goes against Ohio State. But I think I think our defensive line can compete physically in this game. Where I feel like in previous iterations of this game, we have not been able to do that. Well, that's good because, Barry, you look at Ohio State's offense. Okay, they beat Akron, Western Michigan, Marshall, Michigan State. Woohoo! If if Oregon can at least challenge them in the trenches, we're going to have an under game. I agree with Will. Yeah, that, that that's I think we're seeing under here. I, I think all of us are on the uh, the same page here. I think just the way that game is going to be played, uh, Ohio State going on the road. I think Ohio State will be very very content to run the ball, and, and then take their chances. And we'll see if Oregon's offensive line is able to block up front. They've been much better in the last couple of weeks, having allowed a sack after really struggling early on. So, yeah, we're, we're all uh, looking forward to Saturday night, watching this one and uh, taking it. It's it, it, interesting. First time, obviously, uh, 32 games that Oregon has been a uh, a home underdog since 2018. So been a while for the Ducks to be able to embrace this underdog role, and we'll see if that Austin crowd can, uh, can get rocking because it's certainly one of the better – environments in college football uh another unbelievable environment in college football uh the red river rivalry at the state fair of texas uh texas 14 over oklahoma a total around 50 and a half uh, i'll get into a little bit more on this matchup with my best bet later in the in the show which involves this game uh, you're, you're looking at a, a texas team coming off of an idle week uh, looks like quinn ewers will be back uh, at quarterback for the Longhorns, uh, Oklahoma has been struggling offensively, and I, and I think uh, I think well, a lot of people are just going to default to to Oklahoma here. Just looking at the the recent history, rivalry game, neutral field, uh, double digit dog going back to eighty eight, thirteen times we've had a double digit underdog in this game, and they've covered ten of the last thirteen, uh, five outright wins. Uh, 2015, the last time the number was this high in this game, uh, Texas beat Oklahoma as a 16-and-a-half-point dog. So uh, we've seen, what, five undefeated SEC teams go down in the last two weeks. Will, are we going to see Texas add its name to the list on Saturday? I don't think so. And what you said is true. It's been a dog or pass kind of game where we've seen a lot of upsets, a lot of close games. Uh, those years are not, are not like this year. I just don't know how Oklahoma can score. I like Oklahoma team total under 16 and a half just because I don't think that offensive can, uh, that offensive line for Oklahoma can hold up against this Texas front. Texas, if there was a weakness last year, it was the secondary, and they could struggle against the pass. If you throw it over their head, they weren't that good. They're much better uh, against the pass now. And what, a true freshman at, at quarterback for Oklahoma, I'm assuming they stick with him. Oh, boy, if Oklahoma falls behind early, the only, the only recipe, the only path to – you know, success or keeping this game close or competitive is just run the ball. Hopefully get a couple turnovers and just, you know, grind out what, like a 20 to 17, 17, 14 game. I just don't know that they can do it. It reminds me a little bit of Texas, Michigan, where boy, if that's seven, nothing, 10, three, Michigan or 13, uh, three, Texas early, uh, this could get away from Oklahoma. I like Oklahoma team total under here, Sammy. Yeah, why couldn't I get Oklahoma to do to Tennessee what Arkansas did to Tennessee? That would have been that would have been great. Well, a week I would early, still be friend, a week early. I would still be taking that victory lap if I could have gotten that from Oklahoma, but oh, of course not. You get it from Arkansas of all teams. Sam Pittman doing a hell of a job, by the way, this year. Yeah, that was a guy who was one of the favorites to be fired first. Yeah, and he's got Arkansas to a great start. They very uh, easily could be undefeated. No doubt. Um, yeah. So my power ratings are very uh, polarizing, as we know. Uh, I've got Texas as the number one team in the country, so naturally they'll lose this game. <laughs> um, weird, weird note on the total. I remember being in college and thinking, wow, 68's a lot of points and betting the under, and there being like 70, 80 points in this rivalry. Oh, yeah, 40, is... 40, 35, 48, 45. Yeah, rid ridiculous high scoring with, with, with Baker and those offenses. That is not the case. In uh, the year of our Lord, 2024, opens 51 and a half, gets bet down right away 
Uh, there's been some buyback on the over. My question is, and I don't have this answer, I'm asking the room, how many Oklahoma receivers are healthy? Because a couple of weeks ago, it was like two. Um, I, I don't I don't know a lot of people around Oklahoma. If they can have any production from receiver, they could make this a game. But if not, with their line and their quarterback play and their inability to throw with accuracy, 35-10, 31-10. Um, this number and this total tells us that Oklahoma is in trouble offensively. So they're going to have to slow this game down. They don't have the horses, guys, to play into the 30s and into the 40s. Well, it might take them three weeks to get to 40. They don't have the offense yeah. to, to go up and down the field with Texas. So Oklahoma feels like they can only do this one way, and that's the Venables way, to play field position, to punt, to pray, and hope that whoever's at quarterback, whether it be yours or Manning, I think it's yours. I think he's going to play. Sark's been very quiet on it, but we expect Ewers to play. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, you get a sure-handed upperclassman that takes care of the football. Texas wins, probably covers, uh, but I lean under in this one. Wow, I'm Mr. Under this week. Look at me. Look it's at okay. Me. That's good. So, guys, the Oklahoma offense we've talked about, but just I want to put some numbers to it right now, right? Uh, yards per drive, 125 in the country. Uh, yards per play, 124th. Points per drive, 90th. They're nearly 40% of their drives are three and outs. I mean, th these are these are stats that are not going to keep this game close against against Texas, right? Pressure rate, 111 in the country. Um, it's going to be a problem um, against a Texas team that if you cannot move the ball and generate explosive plays, you will punt the ball back to them. They'll wear out your defense. They will score a lot of points by the end. of The, the, the last one here, how about this? Average third down distance for Oklahoma's offense, third and nine. Third and nine. That's You're not, not gonna going to score any points against a Texas defense if you are third and nine, a majority of your third down. So I think this game is probably close early on, and then Texas eventually wears on Oklahoma's defense, which is good. But also, too, off a of bye, who has more of a schematic advantage, would you say? The Oklahoma offense or the Texas offense? I go with Sark. You know, Sark is going to have some things in this game Oklahoma has not seen yet from Texas. So uh, I do like Texas to cover this game. It might be slow early on. You might be questioning early on. But I think third and fourth quarter, Texas offense takes over, and they win this game by comfortable margin. Yeah, I think any news out of Norman this week on the Oklahoma receiving core, if, if anyone can get anything out of that, would be uh, pretty beneficial. And you probably uh, push in a little bit more on that Oklahoma team total if indeed uh, – the wide receiver core continues to be as beat up and injured as it has been. So we'll have a little bit more on that game later on, Jeff and I, when we talk about our uh, our best bets and our fades. Uh, kind of a loser-leave town game in the SEC as well. Uh, Ole Miss against LSU. We, we've got LSU as a, as a, home, a rare uh, home underdog right now. Where, where, or where are we right now as of what we're looking at? Three and a half, 63 and a half. And LSU, it's not, I guess it's not often that the Tigers are a home dog, but when they are, they usually are very, very dangerous uh, as a home dog. They've won seven of the last nine times they've been a dog at Tiger Stadium against a team not named Alabama. So uh, when a team not named Alabama comes in there and they're a dog, they are usually uh, very live. But like I said, the loser here, I think you're looking at nine and three best case scenario here. Because if Ole Miss lose, they, you, that puts a second loss on them. They still have Georgia. Uh, they got Arkansas as well. So some tricky games. So nine and three feels like the ceiling there. Uh, LSU schedule is even worse than that. Uh, they got Bama. They've got AM. Uh, they got Arkansas as well. So uh, a second loss here for LSU, I think, would be really, really. Uh, crippling in terms of their chance to make the playoff would make December 8th a very sweaty selection day um, getting in there with the nine and three record even with that SEC schedule I'd be curious to see uh, what the committee does I feel like Ole Miss team total over is probably the, the play here with the LSU defense struggling uh, no Perkins but but I, I have a sense that by Saturday, LSU might be a side that I'll, that I'll be looking at here because I do think a lot of people feel Ole Miss got right uh, last week against South Carolina. It was a game that I think a lot of people liked South Carolina, and there was a good bit of uh, buy down, uh, buying buy down, uh, a, a good bit of money on the Gamecocks there. It just it ne you were never in it. So, uh, Sammy, I know you probably have an affinity for a uh, kind of a contrarian or an uglyish type dog here. I, I, I can see you. Uh, 
being on the on the Bayou Bengals on Saturday as well. I'm wounded, boys. After uh, Clemson cl- uh, kicked that field goal up 13, the win by 16. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Holding like 15 and a half, 16, 17. Did cover the high numbers, did not cover the low numbers. That was the game Florida State I thought was going to cover, but did not happen. Nussmeyer should have a big game in this one. I think that's the angle I'm looking at. You know, this is a very pro Nussmeyer game. This is, you know, an Ole Miss defense that isn't that great. Um, not good against the pass. We could see him go out and throw for 350, 400 yards. And if that's the case, yeah, you would probably find yourself on LSU plus three and a half. Um, total in the mid 60s. Uh, obviously expecting a, a shootout. Baton Rouge to me is one of those places. I think Baton Rouge at night. And Happy Valley at night are worth awesome. just a little bit more. Just a little bit more because the place is just juiced up. They've been drinking hard liquor since 10 in the morning. You know, they're, they're barbecuing. Why, why are they starting so late, 10 a.m.? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is a 7.30 kick in the bayou. This is this is the toughest time to play LSU. You'd rather play them at 11 in the morning or, or you know, 3.30. You don't want to play them at, at 7.30 at night. Uh, that place will be up for grabs. I also think, guys, and this isn't the most popular take in the world, I think these Brian Kelly teams tend to get better over the course of a season. Now, it's not to say that they're good enough to make the playoff or good enough to win a game in the playoff, but I I think you're going to get an A- minus B-plus game from LSU, and that should be enough at home uh, to beat Ole Miss. And we know Lane in these big games, he's he's been disappointing, to say the least, in games like this under the lights. Yeah, I don't quite trust Lane and Ole Miss enough to lay it, but if I had to lay it or take it, I would lay it. I just think Ole Miss is better on both sides of the ball. Barry, you mentioned Perkins out for LSU, just not good enough on defense. Yes, they're better than they were last year, but it, they're still not good enough, and they're not as good on offense. And you know, Daniels, I think, put 49, 47 up on him last year, and this, that's not going to happen this year. Uh, I just think Ole Miss is front. I mean, they've got six or seven guys on the defensive line. I mean, you usually think of Ole Miss, you think – they're going to score a ton of points, and can they piece together enough stops? This year, it's actually the, the defensive front is the strength of the team. The offense yeah. uh, needs to pick it up a little bit, and I think this is a good spot for them to get on track. Uh, and I just think, boy, it's a dangerous game to play to look at common opponents, but they put they both played South Carolina, and um, you know LSU put up 30, that was a 36-33 game. Ole Miss held South Carolina at three points. So uh, to me, it's Ole Miss or nothing. I just can't. That hook bothers me. If it, you know, if you found a cheap money line, I forgot down to three. Maybe I take Ole Miss, but it's uh, you know th- that atmosphere, like Sammy said, is probably enough to keep me off it, guys. LSU's defense is bad. It's plain and simple, right? Like, do you want to be sitting there? You know, LSU is up, and Ole Miss is driving to 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 win the game. I mean, do you want to be on LSU at that moment? I I don't want to be because I think their defense can't get any stops. Uh, Will you mentioned uh, Ole Miss defense number one in the country in havoc rate, right? Which is pressures, tackles for loss, sacks, passes deflected. They're a good defense. Look, LSU is good offensively. They can't run the ball, which is kind of funky. They have a really good offensive line. They can't run the ball. I think I just think Ole Miss is better. But you guys mentioned it, right? The atmosphere is certainly part of this game. That's why college football is unique in that factor. Uh, I have nothing on this game, but I would not trust LSU covering with their defense. We're going to move on from SEC now to Big 12. Uh, a couple of very interesting games in the Big It seems like every week the Big 12 has some interesting games just because of how balanced uh, the league is here. Big noon kickoff headed to Provo this week for the undefeated BYU Cougars taking on Arizona coming off that loss against uh, Texas Tech last week, a a game that they really couldn't have afforded to lose. And we're looking now, BYU 5, 49 and a half, seems to be the number bet up from three and a half. I don't have a play in this game. I think maybe maybe if I get five and a half or six, if the number continues to go up, uh, there'll be a point of resistance where I will take Arizona plus the points just with uh, T Mac and Fafita against the what's that's the one thing. The BYU corners are a, a little undersized and they could be exploited. But essentially, B- BYU is the only team in the country right now with two wins over teams that are currently ranked uh, in the AP poll. That perfect five and zero against a number covering by an average of sixteen points a game. So uh, everything is going right for for BYU, which blew out K State uh, on this field a couple of weeks back. But right now. I don't have a play. If it gets to six, I'd consider taking uh, uh, Arizona. But until then, I'm going to sit and wait this out. Uh, Will, you got anything here? 
Um, it would be Fafita McMillan just to keep it close for me. And it's funny how these, you know, we look at these games differently than like a month ago. What was it? That Friday night BYU SMU game where uh, BYU wins. Oh man, SMU's a mess. They stink. SMU has played pretty well since. And it's just funny. These results look a little differently uh, just a few weeks later. I, I would think that, look, Arizona doesn't have much besides Fafita McMillan, but that is a uh, a deadly duo. Plus you're getting some points. Uh, it'd be it, it would be dog or pass. Haven't quite gotten there yet. This is a big one. I know you're on under wins. Arizona. Arizona, so am I bear. This would be a, a nice one to notch here to uh, to feel better about. I'm a little concerned about you. How do the apps? How's the old uh, How's the old DraftKings sportsbook app work in old Utah? There, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it does not, which is a, which is a major major problem. Uh, the, yeah, we're we're in a bad state on on Saturday, or Thursday night, Friday, Saturday. Unfortunately, that DK app is not going to be getting the the typical workout that it gets on a uh, a college football Saturday, which is which is terrible and. Maybe they can got, pass the law in the next couple of days to, uh, you know, to to squeeze that in I by the time you get there. That would be great. I mean, I mean hockey's now in Utah, so yeah, they need they yes. need to they need to boost this and get wagering legalized there. At least coming back on on Saturday, I, I will get home early enough where I land at JFK. I'll be able to watch the Oregon Ohio State game in the car, and I'll be able to fire up uh, the the DK app in the car ride home for uh, for the for the for the night games, and maybe look ahead and see if we get any. Any live boosts or any good uh, NFL boosts for for Sunday that we can capitalize on, but yeah, yeah, b- bad, bad, bad state this week. But I think ne- I think we're going to be good for the next couple of weeks from here. I can say next week probably Indiana. Week after that'll be uh, Ohio State. Then I think week after that Penn State. So we we got we got no issues with the with the old DraftKings app uh, once we get once we get out of Utah this week. I tried to buy booze on a Sunday in Utah once. No <laughs> dice. Can't gamble. Drink, which is unfortunate. Not a state for me. I'll ever live there. Uh, summer number, as I get this back on track, uh, summer number, Arizona minus eight. Uh, mm. Talk about a correction in the market from where we were to where we are. So, uh, look, a lot of these numbers, I've used this logic a lot this year. Well, you know, Florida State was favored against Clemson. <clears throat> It doesn't mean that Arizona is going to cover, but when we talk about a team in Arizona that was, you know, north of a touchdown in August, and now BYU is almost a touchdown in mid-October, that seems like a crazy overreaction, but that speaks to how well BYU has played. I'm not going to bet the game. It's a big, fat pass. I am done betting on the undervalued dogs, so... I just I crossed it off and I moved on, just like it's, Rachel Phelps in Major League. Cross him <laughs> off, then. It, it's uh, not summer anymore, nerd. That's what that's what people should say to you, yeah. guys. Arizona's played three opponents, kind of kind of like you know equal to them, right? Got blown up by Kansas State. They beat Utah in Utah, where Cam Rising did not play. He might never play again. Who knows? Uh, Zach Who Wilson, cares? Play, or Isaiah I'm so, Wilson. I'm so uh, done with Utah. We'll get to the. We'll get to that in a second. In a second, there. I promise. We'll we'll talk about Utah. And they lost to Texas Tech. I don't think they're very good. I think BYU is better. I don't have a play in this game, but I think we're looking at Arizona and think T Mac Fafita. I don't know. They haven't played very well. Uh, your your under win total bear uh, and will looks pretty good. I, this team just doesn't seem very good. So uh, I don't have a play in this, but it wouldn't surprise me if BYU won this game by 14 points the way Arizona's played against three like opponents so far this season. Yeah, nor would it surprise me if if Arizona won the game outright. We Correct. have all the more reason to to take the the Sammy approach here and uh, and just pass on it. But I, I think after the. Oregon Ohio State game. Notice how I said Oregon first. I, I did that just for you, Jeff. Like if I'm around, if I'm around, like when I used to be around Desmond, I used to say Michigan Ohio State. If I was around Kirk, I would say Ohio State Michigan. And Thank now around, around Urban, I say Ohio State Michigan as well. So yeah, I try and like give the respect to whomever, what, what side of the rivalry I'm in the room with. But I think after after Oregon Ohio State, K State Colorado is my favorite game of the week. I, I think there's so many storylines uh, surrounding this game. Uh, we, we saw Colorado's defensive line do really well against UCF, slowing down that vaunted running game. Now you get you get Avery and you got the the, the two headed uh, running backs with, with the Notre Dame transfer, who I cannot think of right now. Edwards, right? Yeah, Dylan Edwards. Thank you very no, much. Colorado sure. transfer, right? Yes, Colorado transfer. Yeah, yes, he was. I think I think he was in the mix for Notre Dame. I think I'm going back on the recruiting trail. But thank you for correcting me. My mind's running a million different ways. But uh, Sammy, we talked about this. Uh, a couple of weeks back, how about all the again, all these Colorado look-ahead look numbers were 
uh, are now way off. Like the look ahead in the offseason was what, 14 and a half or whatever it is, 13 and a half. And now you're looking at uh, K State being bet down to four in Boulder. And like, is there a legit chance that, that CU is a, uh, a player in the Big 12. I don't I don't know if I want to get involved. It feels like it's reached a point where maybe there's a little too much Colorado buy-in here. But at the same time, their offense is going to score on pretty much anybody. I just hope they keep winning games because we've got, I think all of us at different prices have some Travis Hunter mm-hmm. stock. So I am just pulling for that. What what do you what do you th- what do you think on that? You think eight and four, eight and four, and no no undefeated teams gets it done? Yeah, I would think so. I mean, we were watching our guy Bruce Feldman on the set, not this past Saturday, but the Saturday before, talking about if they win eight, he's going to vote for Travis Hunter. And we've had, I mean, all these quarterbacks, the Jackson Darts, the Milrose, um, you know, Ewers has been off the field. Now he hasn't done anything wrong when he's on the field, but. Ewers hasn't played enough to probably win the Heisman. Nico gets a loss for Tennessee. Cam Ward has saved Mario two straight weeks. Can that keep going on? Um, And there's a different conversation maybe for a different day. I I got a buddy who just bet a whole lot of money on Clemson to win the ACC, thinking that Clemson's going to beat Miami in the title game, which I, I don't know that I'm quite there yet. But a lot of these quarterbacks have had opportunities but fall in a little flat. I mean, Milrow becomes the Heisman favorite, and then Alabama loses to Vanderbilt. So no quarterback has really seized control of the market yet. There's a long way to go. But if Colorado wins this game, and Hunter has another touchdown and another pick and plays 95 snaps, he's going to become the favorite. And I I think the big question that I have, and I don't know this answer, I'm not going to act like I do, can Avery Johnson outplay Shadur Sanders? No, Um, that's really, to me, the key to the game. We know that Colorado is going to score. Kansas State, wink, wink, is going to need to score more. And and that's very simple. Can Giddens and Johnson be better than Hunter and Sanders? And I'm I'm not sure, but I will be pulling for a a big game from Travis Hunter. I know we all have Hunter stock at different prices. Uh, Bear, you have, I think, the best number in the room. But um, we've been piling on last two weeks on Travis Hunter to win the Heisman. Yeah, I like Colorado. I think we talked about them either last week or the week before at 13 to 1 to win the Big 12. It's down to 9 to 1. I think that's st- still a good number. Uh, I think they cover this week and I think they win. I just think they have more ways to win here than Kansas State because if they get a lead, I just don't know Kansas State. Can they throw it every down? I don't think so. And to me, for Colorado, it's simple. They got a quarterback, they've got weapons, and they've got a much improved run defense. And man, that building is going to be electric uh, here on Saturday. And again, it goes back to my point about like, how quickly things have changed where uh, Baylor was about to beat them and i think we we're all texting at the end of that yep. game like man colorado's just not even you know no they're losing and nobody really seems to care the the fizz, the, the uh the sizzle has kind of come off the stake a little bit on colorado and they pull that game out they bury ucf and here they are in a wide open big 12 and you know i don't know if we'll get to it but i think um you know, i think iowa state could lose this week that's a tough matchup against west virginia I, I don't see any reason why colorado can't be playing for the big 12 title i think they win this week if they do win they are then five and one with games ahead against Cincinnati, which is a win. Yep. Kansas, which looks a lot easier than it was. By the way, Kansas hasn't covered a game yet this year. 0-6 ATS, which is something I never saw coming. Oklahoma State looks easier. Texas Tech looks easier. You win this game, they're getting to eight, barring catastrophic injuries to their two best players. They win this game. We're talking about nine and three, not eight and four. Getting excited. I took Kansas State, guys. I'm opposite of you guys here. They, they oh, here's, 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 here's the Colorado. I, I didn't bet, I didn't bet Colorado. Right I want the Colorado to win. The head. I, I have Travis Hunter ticket, too. I have a good price. I got 3500 I'd love for him to win the Heisman. That'd be fantastic for me. I think Kansas State's better. It's like that. It's that simple, right? They, Colorado's played one like team that can sort of play like Colorado State and Nebraska. They couldn't move the football. I think Colorado State's, I mean, Kansas State's better in the trenches in this game. Yeah, if they have to pass the ball, they're in trouble. The thing that always worries you, right, is Shadur Sanders and Travis Hunter. They can make plays that no one else can make around the country. But, but I have a question for you guys. If they score 24 points against Baylor and lose that game, which is what they were on track to do, are we taking them to win this game? Or are we just looking at them and saying, well, now they're three and two? Probably and, not. Right. And look, the UCF well, game but was but there. That, but that, thing. I think, is good. What we were able to do is kind of react to like that game kind of saved their season. 
and, and sure. you, maybe you buy, you, you buy in a little bit more and you believe that uh, we we escaped here. We played a game. We didn't play well. We should have lost. We won. You, you get a second life and you, you, your season can kind of change and swing. I mean, and, they're, and look, they're, they're college you, kids. They, they believe yeah. in some type stuff. Well, they also have a buy too, which sort of kills some of that that momentum. But I will say this: the UCF game was the best game they've had under Dion. Like that was a legitimate. Like they kicked the shit out of UCF. Yes, I think UCF's did. not as good as we think or thought they were going to be. Their past defense is atrocious. They had they have one sack all season. Like Kansas State can do the things. I think that 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 hurt Colorado. But you're right. There's a path. If Avery Johnson has to pass the football, Colorado State's not going to win and cover this game. So, um, But I think this number is just too low. So I took Kansas State minus the four. I'm not staying up for this one after Oregon wins. I'm going to be too emotionally drained. I'll have to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, th- yeah, this is what I'm looking forward to. Do. I'll, I'll be I'll be home for this one. I will definitely be be dialed into to, to this one late night uh, when when I get back from, uh, from Provo. You mentioned, uh, Will, Iowa State, West Virginia. Uh, Cyclones are a three-point favorite in Morgantown. Uh, it's interesting. They, they've been a team that's really benefited from turnovers this year. When they turn the ball over, which is rare, they don't allow points. When they get turnovers, they capitalize and score. They're plus 45 this year in points off turnover margin. So uh, Matt Campbell's team doing a good job of, A, capitalizing when they when they when they create turnovers and their defense, uh, John Hickok's defense, doing a hell of a job uh, keeping opponents out of the end zone when they do turn the ball over, it feels like a very dangerous spot here. If you go back last twenty five games as an underdog for West Virginia against ranked teams, they've only pulled one upset, and that was against Iowa State in twenty twenty one when uh, they they beat the Clones as a, 20, a seven and a half point dog. Uh, is anybody? If nobody has anything on Iowa State, West Virginia, we can move on to next game in the Big Twelve. I like the over. I think Iowa State can throw it on them with those receivers. West Virginia a little shaky against the pass, and it's a bad matchup for Iowa State defensively. Where uh, West Virginia, they can run the ball, they can push them around the offensive line. So to me, last team with the ball, you know, thirty-one, twenty-eight, thirty-four, thirty-one. I, I lean West Virginia. I don't like laying points with Campbell ever. So uh, I do like the over though. Yeah, your your over by the way got hit. I know. Uh, I, I think a group put that out yesterday. Uh, they, I think it was went from 51 to 53, 53 and a half. So um, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if that number stabilizes or maybe it's a little bit of a buyback. If you like the over, uh, you might want to wait just a smidge because I, I think the the imminent movement happened and now maybe you get a little bit of, of a buyback down. So, But I, I would agree with you. I think this is potentially a, a, a high-scoring game. But back to Utah, Jeff. Who cares? Uh, Who cares about Utah yeah, anymore? That's the thing. This is the problem. It's their about fault. This. It's their it fault. is their fault. And they're a it's six and a half point favorite against Who Arizona cares? State, who's done very well this year. I think they've exceeded a ton of expectations. Like, it's a shame because I like Utah and I, and I like do. To play ball. And but it's like, just be honest. Just is Cam Rising going to play? No. Who cares? It, it's the point where you're alienating everybody yeah. about just dodging around this this question and being all secretive and and how would you like to be a how would you like to be the beat writer for that for that team so like you get information about cam rising and the utah beat writers are just kind of like regurgitating what kyle is saying how does the utah beat writer not have a relationship knowing how difficult it is to get information out of kyle whittingham with either a student trainer or or someone on the support yeah. staff deals with the team on it. That's where you need to get the information from. And you have to, you know, Kyle's not going to give you anything. No. So I'm rooting for Arizona State this week, mainly because I'm going to BYU. The the, the problem is this, right, guys? Like Utah is a top, they're ranked 16th in the country, like a legitimate Big 12 contender this year. They won the Pac 12 conference in previous years. We like Kyle William, we like the program, and they made it to the point where we just don't care anymore. Because of the corporate situation, like they've done this to themselves. Look, is Arizona State going to win this game? I, I, I don't know. Arizona State's played much better, I thought, this season, but their skill, they're, they're not as skilled as Utah is. Utah's off a bye. They just lost their previous game. I mean, I, I think Utah could go in Arizona State and, and win and cover this game, will, but I, who knows, man? I'm just so uninterested in Utah now with the Cam rising every week. Will he play? Will he won't play? Will he redshirt? What will he do? It's just so unappetizing to me. It's unappealing to have a discussion each and every week about Utah. It's funny as we're as we're having this discussion, as we're saying this, we finally have a little clarity on the situation. Breaking news: Cam Rising on Saturday uh, will be questionable. 
<laughs> no way. No. They, you they sold that very well. I, I actually, game, like, game like, time like decision. I like heard report. game time decision. That's what I heard. I didn't hear questionable. I heard. <laughs> I heard was he it game time play. decision or was it true game time decision? Because some of these new break, news breakers have different designations: game time decision, questionable, true game time decision, and it's, it's up to the reader. It's up to us to decipher what's what. I'm actually hearing that uh, he might play or he might not play. That's I was just being told that in my ear that Cam <laughs> may play or may not play. Will you've been firing these Friday night dogs? We got another one with Q yeah. Speed and UNLV. I mean, you've been talking about the Friday night dogs. This is right in your wheelhouse. Uh, I think Arizona State's live. I mean, they're physical. They're aggressive. Scadaboo is a hell of a player. And uh, we'll give a little plug to DraftKings because DraftKings does something smart. Uh, They know there's only a couple games on. Maybe you don't like the games, but they do this thing where they give you a little boost if you bet the Friday night games or or a sweat-free or 100% boost, 50% boost, where I might not like one side or the other, but hey, if I can get Arizona State plus 210 up to like plus 280 or plus 300, you almost feel like dumb for not taking it. So check out those boosts, man. Those are good to uh, to build the old bankroll when you you get these little freebies or boosts or whatever. It's a good way. And look, even if you play on another book and you you hedge out of it and you generate some profit, it, it makes the games more exciting and it's a good way to uh you know earn some cheap money i i agree that they, they, they do a good a good job with that and then the usually every one of the marquee games on, on saturday i'll have a uh yep. big i know they have a big one all set already for ohio state uh, oregon as well i'm sure they'll have some nfl stuff on sunday as well they they do a really nice job with like the uh they throw it together like a like a touchdown score parlay boost like with uh for the nfl or depending on how many legs you get, either like a 30 or 40 or 50 or 20, depending on the number of legs. So, yeah, check those out. But, but DraftKings isn't even paying me, and we'll give it a positive promotion. Yeah. That's a, they, they, we got to work on that, guys. But emotion, college football, I hit it up before. So much, you, you don't, you're not going to get the same team week in, week out. And I, I think Cal is a perfect example of that this week. You're up, what was it, 35 10? On, on on the canes there in Strawberry Canyon on Saturday night. I actually went to bed uh, right after that ridiculous pick six, and I was like, "Oh, all right, I'm good. I'm I'm tired. I can barely keep my eyes open." And I woke up literally to one thousand one hundred and ninety eight texts. <laughs> it was I really should have taken a screen grab of it just to like show people it was true? But I'm in a big Miami group chat. And every single one of my friends was was texting me. The, the big noon kickoff group was going well because they were flying back west uh, from from last week for, from Penn State. So it, to wake up and and see what see what ultimately happened was ridiculous. But how do you bounce back from that, Jeff? As, as a player with, with Cal, where the game is won, you're going to pull a massive upset. Yeah. You blow it, and now you got to go cross country to undefeated Pitt. Uh, who's been putting up points left and right. Uh, it's only three, which, which seems a little low. I would have thought Pitt would have been uh, yeah. been north of three, maybe four here. You you don't. You get your butts kicked this weekend. I, I don't expect much from Cal. It, it's a, it, they're back on the road again. I mean, they went to Auburn already and Florida State. Now the Pitt, I mean, they've taken long trips this season off a very emotional loss, guys. I, I, I can't imagine – we get Cal's be- best effort on Saturday. It's not their fault. It's just this is college football. They're 18 and 22-year-olds. I mean, that game was one they're up 35-10. And, and you add in the officiating at the end at the end where they can sort of blame the officiating for the reason why they lost, right? Sort of mentally take take the pressure off of them and say it's the officials' fault. They didn't call that mm-hmm. targeting, right? Like, yep. but they got outscored 29 to 3 to end that game. They allowed a third and 20 conversion. They allowed multiple fourth down conversions. Um, so I think it's a tough spot for them where, where Pitt's offense right now is really rolling. They're scoring points at a high rate. They're seventh in the country at points per drive. Cal's going back across the country. Uh, guys, I see, I mean, I think it's a really tough spot for for Cal here. Uh, it was going to be my, my fate of the week. Uh, I, I went to another game. I, I just think we see this a lot. Cal just sort of is sluggish on Saturday. We have hit three and a half, by the way, uh, with, with this game. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. Lay the three now if you can. There are very few left in the market, and by the time the show gets posted, it'll be likely three and a half everywhere. Although I don't I don't think the three and a half is as big of a deal in college as it is in the NFL. I mean, it's way more important 
uh, in the professional ranks than it is in college with the way these kickers are and how inaccurate they can be from time to time. But also the way Jeff's talking, like it's not going to land three or four. <laughs> Jeff's well, saying it's it going to be be a decided win for Pittsburgh. Uh, if it does land three, I apologize for <laughs> Jeff. Um, I I agree with the Pittsburgh thing. Um, I also, guys, I have a friend who is in a college football survivor pool. And it's not a big pool, so there's not a lot of people left. Okay. He had Miami just to win. Wow. Oh. <laughs> and he goes into that third, fourth quarter thinking he's out. And he was fired up on, uh, I guess it was early Saturday. No, early Sunday morning. Sunday morning, yeah. Yep. When it finally got done, he just needed the Canes to win. 39-38 Miami. Never in oh. doubt. Oh. Road favorite cross country. That's what they opted to use use it a college football survivor. That's a uh, an interesting decision there. Damn, you got to be nervous though. I mean, I have Miami to make the playoff. I think even if they lose in the ACC title game, the Clemson, they would still they would both get in if they're undefeated. For sure, right? There are not a lot of landmines, and you also have a scenario now in the ACC where Clemson, Miami, and SMU. Don't play each other, and they could all finish undefeated. Mm -hmm. Who makes the title game there? I mean, good luck to the to the conference to figure that one out. Yeah, but I, as a I, Miami as a Miami fan, Bear, you got to be very nervous having watched Miami against Vatek and Cal in back to back spots. That's no, not good. I, I totally am because the, the we talked about the, the, at least they won the games, which is great. Uh, they have an offense that can move the ball and generate points. But defensively, the secondary does have some issues. Uh, it's going to be – you talk about the perfect time for an idle week. Uh, coming off of that game and before you go to Louisville uh, next week, which will be – again, Jeff Brom will have some stuff drawn up. Uh, we'll, we'll see if Louisville can get out of Virginia and break their uh, their losing streak. But but you're right. You would think Florida State is a win because the, the Knolls look like they're incapable of scoring points. Uh, Duke, I think, is kind of a fraudulent – Five and one team. The game at Georgia Tech could give them problems uh, defensively. Uh, the game at Syracuse, last game of the year, you know, you know, McCord and Gadsden, that that offense can, can score some points. So yeah, it, it is not a not a given yeah. at all that they get through this schedule uh, undefeated. But but I would imagine my, my guess would be if none of the teams play, it's it's either one of the it's one of two things. Either it's the the top two teams in the college football playoff rankings go to the ACC title game, or you kind of form the the little, like, who played who below them in, in like, the best result amongst, like, a mini-conference. So, it, it, it's like I said, all, a lot of these ladies are going to come down to tie breaks now because they're so damn big and awful and nobody plays everybody. So, yeah, I have a Miami to make the playoff ticket. Um, have a Miami to win the ACC. And like your friend, a couple that you said, we uh, played Clemson to win the ACC. I did that as well. I don't have, I'm, I'm naked on SMU. So, uh, I had SMU tracks. 16 to one, and that would have, uh, man, I'd be in a nice position to maybe yeah. even hedge in a title game. So, I think they should just put SMU in. I'm not saying that because I have the, <laughs> the, 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 the problem with Miami guys, and this is the thing we saw Cam Ward do to Washington State, is, I mean, geez, those interceptions. I mean, that one against Cal, I mean, that should almost disqualify you from winning the Heisman. That that pass was so bad across mm -hmm. your body into like quadruple cup. What did he expect to happen on that play? So that's an issue with Miami right now. Is like on any given play, Cam Ward can just do something really dumb. Did it go out against and, Virginia Tech the week and, before? And, right, and against better teams, you're going to end up losing those games. So I think for Miami, that's my concern. I have I have the same tickets that we all have. I have Miami to be a playoff team um, at two to one. I, I want to cash it, obviously, but I need Cam Ward to sort of stop making these mistakes. It's going to cost them eventually. Yeah, just for some context, if Miami were to play Texas right now on a neutral, because people like having these conversations, I would make Texas... Let me guess. Oh, did you say it? I didn't eight. hear it. I did I'm not. Go eight. I did not say eight. it. Fair? I'm going to say... Let's see. They were... Carry I'm going with one. eight. I'm, 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 I'm going to say seven and a half. It's 131 to 123 and a half. It is seven and a half on the nails. Sorry, Jeff. No, I was close. You were right there. But I, I also right found this too. I found mm -hmm. this note by my desk. 
the Jeff hates Colorado wow. from our earlier segment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you, you can put see. Bear hates Utah on, yeah. on that note now too. And I thought I hated Colorado. Jeff really hates Colorado after that spot of the show. Now, we don't hate Colorado. We, we, we're all we're all in on Travis Hunter. That's, that's, that's it. <laughs> as long as you win the Heisman, buddy, or get close enough where I can make some money off of it, I'm good. Sam, uh, are we I'm... making money off of Purdue this week? Oof. I think we are. And unfortunately, guys, on this Wednesday, I don't know that we're going to have an FCS play because we, we milked the Fordham thing as much as we could, and they finally didn't cover – and somebody said, "Nice call, fading Fordham." <laughs> <Like> it went, <laughs> went four and one. Sorry for the first four <laughs> weeks. Yeah, four and one in five weeks. I, I don't know what to do because Fordham is playing a team that only has two wins. It's Fordham and Holy Cross. We have no numbers. Use have, Luke is old school. We have no idea what the number is going to come. I mean, it's it's Wednesday as we tape this. These lines don't come out until Saturday. It's it's getting harder earlier in the week to give FCS, but. Um, I'm being told, you know, and last week we talked about this on a couple programs, uh, white flag at Purdue. And, you know, that, that happened two weeks ago. Uh, they were down 28 to three against Nebraska. They were outgained by almost 200 yards. They should have lost that game by four scores. Then you heard about the players getting kicked off the team. Uh, the started corner was kicked off. They kicked off a linebacker and they go in and they give up 52 to Wisconsin. Wisconsin can't move the ball. Correct. Wisconsin crossed the 50, I think one time against Bama. And if you look at Purdue's schedule, they gave up 66 to Notre Dame, lost by 59. Oregon State crushed them, a game that Jeff I know picked on the show, 38 to 21. They should have lost by 25 to Nebraska, and then they lose 52 to 6 to Wisconsin. I'm being told they just hate the coach. The whole team, the program, the boosters, the players, they hate the head coach who's walking around school like nothing stinks and and everything stinks. And there's also an enemy of this coach, Walters, at Purdue, Brett Bielema. Brett Bielema, <laughs> head coach at Illinois, used right. to employ Walters as the D.C. Well, when Walters went to Purdue, he took some coaches, he took some QC guys, he took some players. He's been running his yap about Bielema and Illinois, and I'm being oh. told Bielema is ready to go. Like, they want to play this game now. Mm-hmm. They are ready to go. And you talk about a Purdue team, guys – that went to the Big Ten championship game with Jeff Brom, this hire looks worse and worse by the minute. And I don't know if it's John Sumrall or Jason Candle. They, they, they got to move on eventually because this program is in shambles. And mm-hmm. I know a couple guys that are are ready to go. They are just waiting for the the Purdue move. Because Bear, they, they bet Purdue against Notre Dame. They bet them from 13 to 7. They bet him against Oregon State. They bet him against Nebraska. They bet him from 14 to 11 against Wisconsin. And they've just gotten killed in all these games. So I know they're going to lay anything under 20, but I think they're kind of waiting to see if people are still dumb enough to bet on Purdue. It's a big number. It's getting big, and eventually the number's too big. But under 2021, it's it's hard to look away from Illinois given all of those variables that we just talked about. Hey, DraftKings, we, we said all these nice things about you this podcast here. Throw, throw a little Purdue season win total over under one and a half up there for me. <laughs> see, I just said your favorite see, thing, see. Sammy. I just bet more. I bet more in Illinois while you were talking. So, Good. Uh, Good. I, 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 I made the mistake. Last, Sammy texted us last week. It said Saturday morning-ish. I think it was Saturday morning. Like, guys, Purdue's quit. Like, And I was like, oh, I don't know. Wisconsin's missing their running back and their quarterback. I'm going to sit this one out. I look like a dummy. And Sammy didn't gloat enough. I thought I thought I was surprised you didn't gloat enough on this one, Sammy. But um, yeah, look, I, I talk about this in my fade soon. Um, every information Sammy's had on Purdue has been right. This team clearly has given up. Um, and Illinois is off a bye. They're gonna feel fresh. They just lost their last game, right? To, to Penn State off a bye. They're gonna want to make a statement in this game. So um when you f- identify a team like Purdue that's sort of given up, and we've seen this throughout the years, um, there's no coming back from it. You you, you just you continue just to, to stink. And we might even get news of players trying to redshirt, as we've seen around the country, right? Play their four games and shut it down. Anyone that has any sort of eligibility left and any of those questions. So um, I, I'll talk more about this on my fate of the week, uh, Will, but uh, I'm heavy on Illinois. I just hit him again, too. So I'm glad to do that. 
Same church, different pew. Uh, what are you guys hearing, Sammy Bear? Anyone who wants to jump in about UAB? Because Army, I don't know, should be laying 26 and a half against anyone. But my goodness, that has not gone well. Uh, the coach they all wanted is doing really good things at UL Monroe. Yep. Uh, Dilfer can be a polarizing personality. That was an out of the box hire. I don't know. I don't know how you bet UAB. I don't know how you bet Purdue. I'm curious if you guys have heard anything about UAB Bear. I have not. Uh, I, I can I can ask around, but yeah, it, it seems like uh, after you give up what seventy last week, uh, like they did, it certainly has a little bit of a feel of uh, yeah, we're 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 sick of your, you know what? It doesn't sound like well, it doesn't sound like Zeno's going to play. He's got a shoulder. That's their starting quarterback for for UAB. I I don't expect him to play. Um, that's not public, but if you go into that game with your backup quarterback, it's even worse. An army doesn't care. They're just going to run what the hell they're going to run. And if you if you can stop it, great. If you can't, get ready for thirteen play scoring drives and and us just chop blocking and, and running the ball downhill the entire game. Well, it's is that what it is? Twenty six and a half now. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. That's wow. uh, that's all. That's almost so big that like the only side you can play is. I right. know. Open 21. It's already moved five points in three days. Oh. Hmm. I don't know. I see the wheels spinning. I see I, I see how your mind's working. I mean. Yeah. Uh, I, what about an Army team total? Over. Yeah, that might be a way to go. Yeah. Yeah, because they'll probably score every possession. I think we yeah. should just get a bear bets boost on the uh, Army and Illinois money line wheel. And we should get a huge boost on that. <laughs> what do you think? Just yeah, wheel yeah, it. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, are we my, my, yeah two, 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 two-legged parlay, uh, minus 1,300. 41 and a half is even money, Jeff, for Army team total. You want to go 40? 40, 41 and a half? Yeah. Oh, my God. You, they're just daring you to fade UAB. They're daring you to back UAB. They're just they're 40, double that's dog daring team you. total, 41 and a half? Yeah, I mean, you could pick your juice at DraftKings here. So, like, 38 and a half is minus 135. 39 and a half is somehow still minus 135. 40 and a half minus 125. Then 41 and a half over is even money. Yeah. I mean, Army scored 42, 24, 37, 42, 49. I'm looking forward to this one scenario that might happen, guys, where – we get back to back weeks of Army Navy. They play in the in, in, in the American Championship game, and they play again the following week as they normally do uh, for the final culture ball records re- game of the weekend. That could be a it'd be crazy. They play back to back weekends like yeah, that. We 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 brought this up last week on Big Noon Kickoff when I, when I was talking with Bruce Feldman. I, I said like he was talking about how the UN potentially UNLV Boise State Mountain West Championship game that would be the Group of Five representative. I was like, let me throw this at you. What, what about Army and and, Air, and and Navy? Yeah, uh, they both could be undefeated. They could play twice. Army's forty to one to make the playoff. Navy's fifty five to one to make the playoff. Like, uh, they're not outclassed by any team in this conference. So, uh, no. I actually played both of those both of those numbers to make the playoffs. So, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, um, Army will get a big win. Hopefully, Purdue will continue doing Purdue things, and the Gambling Group shall keep providing some more winners. Appreciate you guys. Back from Gambling Group Chat, no Fordham wager. I'm sad. I bet a tiny bit on, on Lafayette <laughs> last week because I figured that number was getting a little bit too big. So I, we lost, but I didn't lose a, a big unit, which was nice bear. Um, all right, my fade of the week. It's going pretty well so far. Hopefully I don't jinx myself with that. Uh, we talked about it just a minute ago. Uh, I'm fading Purdue. I have Illinois minus 19 here. Uh, I just think Purdue's dead. I, I should take Sammy's advice. I didn't do that's, it. That's me, banging, that's me banging the big-ass drum. I, I don't yeah. have a full drum, but it's just me kind of – Bang in my hand. Maybe, yeah, maybe. I, I feel like that's going to turn into a meme bear. I'm sorry. Nonetheless, um, I uh, I just, we talked about it. I, what more do you want me to say? Uh, I have Illinois minus 19. Um, they're off a bye. Purdue has given up. Uh, Illinois offensively bear. I don't know. They're okay, but 66 points, 52 points they've given up. They give up in the high 30s to Oregon State. Uh, give me Illinois minus 19. The only thing I would have a little bit of concern, if any, would be Illinois just kind of, looking past sluggish sleepwalking Purdue uh, with the game against Michigan next week. And then a game against sure. Oregon the week after that. Yes, that would be it. But it, it seems like Sammy it's kind of alleviated those, those yeah. concerns. Uh, yeah. My best bet presented by DraftKings Sportsbook is Texas. Uh, I, I kind of hinted at it in the gambling group chat about uh, how I think people are going to be on the underdog here just because of the, the history in this rivalry about being a close game. But, I'm with you. 
I don't see it. You've got a Texas team that's held every single team to 14 points or fewer uh, in three of its four games against power four opponents. Oklahoma has scored exactly two offensive touchdowns. So three, three, three games against power four opponents. Each game they scored two offensive touchdowns. So uh, it makes me feel like they're going to be hard pressed to score more than two uh, against Texas here. They're 117th in uh, expected points added on offense. Power four worst, 13 plays of 20-plus yards and uh, 26% conversions on third down, mainly because of the ridiculous uh, conversion distance that they've had to deal with that you alluded to as well. Uh, I think a lot of people are expecting a close game. I don't think this is a close game. I think Texas, after the way they lost last year, kind of giving one away, I uh, I am on the horns. Don't be blinded, guys, by this being a rivalry game. It, it matters a little bit, but in the end, Texas is far better, right? Like the rivalry matters at the start, basically. But I think, as we mentioned, Texas just takes over talent-wise if Oklahoma has a, a bunch of three and outs. All right, my best bet, Bear, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. I'm taking Penn State, road favorite, at USC, minus five. Let's talk about USC, Bear. Last 12 games, Lincoln Riley's squad is five and seven. And anytime they play a team that can match in the trenches, not even match, it's better than the trenches. Guess what? Lost. Notre Dame lost. Utah lost. Washington lost. Oregon lost. UCLA last season was good in the trenches. Lost. This year, Michigan lost, did not cover. Minnesota lost and did not cover. Bear, Penn State's defense, uh, 14th in havoc rate, 6th on the defense line, 13 in points per drive on offense, uh, ninth on defense. Bear, USC, I, I don't, I can't make a case for this. I don't know what what the case is that USC keeps the same close other than just Drew Aller has a bad game, I guess. But the way Penn State is playing on offense or keeping them out of, out of harm's way, they're kind of grinding teams out. Has USC score? They're not scoring on these good defenses, but they haven't no. done that. It was 20 last year, Notre Dame, 18 UCLA. You know, Michigan didn't score very much. Minnesota they didn't score. So I think Penn State wins and covers this game. Yeah, their team total under 22 and a half was how I – ultimately wound up playing this game. I actually like that better than laying the five with Penn State. But I, I, I would, if you like Penn State, I would hop in with Jeff right now. I have a feeling this thing's going to hit hit five and a half, maybe even six uh, as we get closer to game time, just because of how bad USC has locked, looked offensively and kind of the, 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 the public opinion feel swarm of yeah. how people feel about Lincoln Rally and USC right now. Yeah. So another one in the books. Uh, halfway point of the year already. How about that? Uh, teams playing six six game, and next week will be week seven for for a lot of teams. Just seasons flying by. This one kind of flew by as well. A lot of fun uh, with with the guys again in the gambling group chat. Uh, so many different places to get more info. Uh, appreciate everybody subscribing here and downloading wherever you get your podcast. Spotify, Apple, our Bear Bets YouTube channel as well. If you want to check us out and and make fun of us and all of our, our backgrounds and uh, a ni- nice pick nerd with Sammy uh, during the week. We got, <laughs> just had to throw it in, a nice pick nerd. Um, during the week, I got my uh, my study hall guide uh, up on foxsports.com, just kind of giving you a preview of uh, the, what, what I'm looking forward to this week and how we plan to potentially cover it on Big Noon Kickoff. So that's it for now. We'll back. We'll do it again next week. NFL pod will drop on Thursday. Bruce and Bear on Friday. Big noon kickoff from Provo on Saturday. Plus, you bet more you lose when you win. <laughs>